Morning everybody and uh, tonight is uh, Shanty Town so I hope you're all going to be going to that. Uh, promises to be a good evening and uh, maybe I'll see you there. But I just wanted to have a quick word about uh, Pleasure Armour and uh, filming at council meetings again and uh, Victoria Pavilion. So, so let's start with uh, Pleasure Armour and uh, it's, it's now clear that the council have started negotiations with uh, SFP Ventures for probably a, a last-ditch effort to try to uh, to get the project uh, up and running, which I find really hard to believe uh, that the council are talking to these people again, trying to get a deal together, when after 11 years of doing absolutely nothing, uh, they've, they've let down Ramsgate badly, and they've uh, created a massive eyesore on our seafront, and I really can't see that they're ever going to complete what, what, what they did and really the council I think should actually be looking at the legal advice it's supposed to be getting in order to sack SFP uh, to put things uh, quite crudely uh, I, I believe this company's taken the piss out of uh, Thanet Council and uh, out of the people of Ramsgate the way it's treated that land and done absolutely nothing over this long period of time. It doesn't really inspire me with any confidence that they're going to do it this time. So we should be looking at stopping the project, sacking SFP and its associates, and uh, looking for, for, for another use of that land on the basis of public consultation with local people. It's nonsense to try to make something that's so patently broken work. So uh, that, that's Pleasure Armour. Filming, I'll, a few words about filming. I have uh, published now uh, a film, I, an undercover film I took of uh, the Pleasure Armour working group meeting and that's on my blog site. And uh, I, I personally believe the council's position on filming at meetings is, is untenable now. Uh, on Monday of this week, uh, the government introduced legislation that will force councils to allow filming. Uh, in the Gazette on Friday, Laura Sands uh, said that the council should be filming. Uh, and even the Labour and Tory parties at national level all agree that filming is right. Uh, at the debate on Monday, Eric Pickles was uh, supporting uh, filming and Hilary Benn of the Labour Party was also uh, saying that council should allow filming. So quite clearly, Thanet District Council is on the wrong side of progress. Uh, and it should let the uh, cameras in. Having said that, when you look at my film, you probably go to sleep. So is it really worth it? But yeah, I mean, it's all about accountability. It's all about transparency. Uh, and people should be allowed to film their councillors and their council officers at work uh, in order to cast some light on how the democratic process works or, or doesn't work as, uh, as it might be in, in Thanet. So that's why I've done it. I'm sure there's going to be... Uh, one or two uh, howls of annoyance and, and so on about this and probably some efforts to to uh, to discipline me but how stupid will uh, will Thanet Council look when within probably less than a year they're going to have to do it anyway so uh, I, I certainly intend to carry on filming when and wherever I can and when it's appropriate and I would encourage uh, members of the public to turn up to council meetings with their cameras and film the very worst that can happen to you is that you're thrown out, you won't get criminal record, you're not going to go to court. Uh, but the very, you know, the very fact that you're doing it and making the council look stupid is, is a good thing. It's time for the attitude of Thanet District Council to change and be a lot more inclusive, a lot more listening and, uh, and, and, and uh, a lot more modern than it is at the moment. Which gets me on to another issue which is uh, Victoria Pavilion. And... Uh, we are now thankfully getting into a situation where uh, the lease on the pavilion that, that, that looks like there's going to be some competition about uh, putting in bids for the lease. Uh, that there's been a lot of speculation about Weatherspoons and uh, that being council, the council's preferred partner. Well, there are actually some good rival bids coming up now, and and there are local businesses who are who are looking at developing uh, uses at the pavilion that, that will create jobs for local people, that will keep the money that's made within the local economy 
uh, rather than uh, an organisation like Weatherspoons, which will hoover up all the money, take it out of uh, Thanet and, uh, and, and send it somewhere else. Uh, what we want, I think, are local people uh, coming forward with plans, local businesses for the pavilion and uh, the council, I think, should, should be listening, not trying to rush to do a deal with Weatherspoons before it's considered all the other options and uh, I certainly know a lot of people are, are beginning to put pressure on the council now to do that thing, in, including myself, so uh, let's see what happens. I mean, the, the Victoria Pavilion is such an iconic building of Ramsgate Seafront. It's such an important building that really its future uh, should be considered properly by the council. All the options should be on the table rather than rushing to do a deal with one preferred partner. That's what's happened in the past and that's where things have gone wrong. So let's hope that local businesses have the opportunity to state their case for the future of a pavilion and certainly my preferred option would be local people doing something that keeps most of the profit and money that's made from from uh, from the pavilion within the local economy uh, so that's uh, Victoria Pavilion uh, the, uh, the, the, the other thing of course is a catch up on uh, on the illegal demolition work on, on Ramsgate High Street uh, it would now appear that the council has served notices on the uh, the demolition people, a company called uh, Panther, Daddy. I believe. And uh, Panther have, have, have quite blatantly gone in onto the building site on the high street and flouted planning regulations and knocked down things that they should not have had permission for. Uh, the council, I believe, is now trying to uh, have a meeting with them to interview them under caution. I'm also led to believe, uh, I don't know how true this is, but this is what people have told me, that the uh, demolition company Panther has also illegally interfered with, uh, with, with uh, the electricity supply on the site and possibly the gas as well, leaving those in a potentially dangerous state. Uh, it, it seems to me uh, that, that, that uh, Panther may not be following the law and if that's the case if it's proven that they're not following the law then I believe that they should be prosecuted and the highest penalties imposed on that organisation because quite frankly you can't have companies running around in Thanet knocking things down and building things uh, without the proper permissions it, it's just not on so if they have been breaking the law I sincerely hope that uh, the severest penalties will be put on, on uh, Panther and they'll think twice in future uh, about messing around with planning laws uh, and uh, let's see what happens there. So I think that's my, uh, my rant for the week. Sorry about all the background noise, I'm, uh, I'm uh, looking after the kids today and all being well, uh, I might see some of you down at Shantytown tonight. So bye for now.